House Democrats? Well, I mean, for those of us who've watched Nancy Pelosi's leadership over the last 10 years, and, and, and really Democratic leadership in general, I think they've been very reckless at accusations of racism for a long time now, so it's really difficult for a lot of us to shed a tear without watching them do what they saw with AOC and the rest of them in this latest clash. I will say, it, she is in a more tenuous position than John Boehner ever was. And she Pelosi. She Pelosi. And, and I, well, I, I'm so a little surprised you say that the House Freedom Caucus have a lot more members than the squad does. I love the squad. They're going to be a squad. <laughs> it's, the squad. It's, it's the squad from here on out. Yeah. Um, the first opportunity that they had in a legislative function to sort of show these rifts was right before the 4th of July. And I think if you back up and look at the timeline in 2010 from when John Boehner's problems started, these are excelling. These are much, much quicker in a much, much more aggressive way and personal way than House Republicans ever were at that stage. What is equally hard for me to figure out is how she can help with We're talking about extreme differences that are manifesting themselves on the national stage with extremely personal attacks on two sides of the conference. Never the two shall meet. And so the governing at this stage looks to me very, very difficult. I'm going to turn to another subject. We were gearing up this week for the big hearings with Robert Mueller this Wednesday, July 17th. All day coverage on Fox. Uh, and then they were delayed to July 24th, a week from Wednesday. Here's uh, one of the House Democratic leaders, David Cicilline, on the Mueller hearing. It's very important that the American people have the opportunity to hear from Robert Mueller, that he have the opportunity to convey to the American people all the evidence he can offer. One, one, what do you make of the delay? And two, the same question I asked Congressman Lujan. With the delay, the hearings are now going to be on Wednesday, and two days later, obviously it's for six weeks. Doesn't whatever, if there are, is anything that they can build on, doesn't that really end the momentum? Uh, I don't think it ends the momentum. In fact, I think the entire intent of this, given that Mr. Mueller has made it very clear no, the issue of the Reforms Act is a much bigger reform, is to give the American people and the Democrats perspective a chance to hear what Mueller has said. I think a lot of people didn't agree with the report. And so for them to have televised coverage of Robert Mueller sitting there saying what his fighting for, not listening to the Attorney General Bill Barr spin it but actually get to the point. And when the, the largest point would be the criminal process, it's not the place to go after this president. We can go after this non-criminal, and that's me. There's no impeachment. I understand that. But then the fact that they're going to leave town for six weeks. I don't think it's going to stop this argument over Russian interference and over the participation of this uh, court campaign with that Russian interference and whether or not there was any effort to obstruct the Mueller uh, investigation. I don't think that's going to win six months. Congressman Jacobs, Mueller has made it very clear with a reluctant he does not want to do this. He's also made it very clear he is going to stick with what was written by them and his team in 448 days. What are the chances these big hearings are not to be in I think highly likely. First of all, I think there's still about a 50 50 shot as to whether or not we actually even have it. I mean, you had the Attorney General say out loud that he would support Mueller should he decide not to attend. I think Mueller's concerned about his long-term uh, presence and tenure, and he doesn't want to go out having a, you know, ignored a subpoena. But at the same time, he has nothing new to say other than what Republicans are going to ask him about all the things that Mueller didn't do. So the Democrats, they can't seem to put this hearing together. It's been a couple of months now since the report initially came out. That should be the first clue that, hey, this thing is not going well. They, the Democrats just seem to want to have it read aloud because they're frustrated that, oh my gosh, how come nobody's listening over here? Because there's nothing in there that's going to prosecute anybody in the Trump orbit in any way, shape, or form. That thing is over. Congresswoman Harmon? It's a teachable moment for everyone, not just Democrats. There will be three hours of Judiciary Committee hearings, two hours of Intelligence Committee hearings, all public. And if the members on both sides ask serious questions, oh I think we all... Last time Congress asked serious questions. Uh, you know, actually... Because the public audience, they were on that committee, they were going to show that they have nothing to hide. They have nothing else to do with the Congress. There is always hope. I live in hope, and I think Congress could have a really good day. Oh, I, just, I worry that Mr. Jacobs is going to 
Jacobs just said is absolutely right. That you're going to see now, an effort by the White House, the president described this as Democrats seeking another body of law to discourage Mueller from ever testifying. We know that the Justice Department stopped two of Mueller's top aides from testifying. So I, I and they're kind of going to go after the credibility. Oh, why did this investigation start? It was based on phony documents. You're right, and that is what I 